Ooh, well, what's the crack, everybody? How are you getting on? Just as very loud. How are you doing? Welcome to another episode of the Tom and Mahoney Show. It's Friday the 16th. Of course, Patreon's got this... Jeez, I think they got it Wednesday. No, they did. They got it Wednesday night. They did. They did. Because when that's when we recorded. These things aren't live. You're very welcome if it's your first time listening. Fair play to you. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a Patreon, as there is with every single podcast in the vegan world. But we have some beautiful ones here. They get the extras, like the ad-free content, the early access. They get the videos to the interviews. And they get uh, live podcasts as well as that. So when we do live shows on Sunday evenings, it's Patreons only. We jump on and we have the crack. As well as that, there's the Ramble Pod in the middle of the week that's exclusive to Patreons. Bit of an announcement. Going to have a live show. Live, live podcast. It's going to be the 25th of August in the Roundy, which is the Coco Comedy Club in Cork as part of the Cork Podcast Festival. Yeah, going to be there. So tickets will be going on sale for that very soon. And I'll let you know. I will post it everywhere. Don't be worried. I won't be shy about it. It'll be mostly in the link in the, that you'll see under the notes that'll lead you to everything. Like my comedy club, The Hill. Emma Doran tickets are now available. There's half gone. <laughs> uh, Neil Delamere sold out for next weekend. And of course, my new tour, which is kicking off in November. Ticking off is the name of it. I'm going to be everywhere. But the first, maybe six in November, maybe I do a couple in December, but kicking on then into January. But November ones are up, which is Cork, Tipperary. Limerick, Port Leash, Wexford, and Belfast is about to go on sale as well for I think the 12th of November. So, tis all in there. Tis anything else you want to know, or if you just want to just say hi, anything in that link, you can get it, get on board with. The usual platforms, you know what I mean? Tom O'Mahony Comedy, we'll find it anywhere really. Say hello, take a screen grab. Do you know what I mean? So it's all the gig news, really. Uh, there's comedy club stuff popping up all over the place. I think I'm, I'm, I'm BBC Radio Ulster this weekend or is that the correct way of saying it I'm recording something for them Saturday evening so I, I I don't know I'll be clean that's all I know there's also if you haven't seen my uh, full special comedy special that's there in that link as well it's called Clattered from last year go have a gander at that cack, o- crack, o- cack open cack open a cran or crack open a can even for the weekend if you haven't given it a watch that's all of that stuff that's the housekeeping you know how to support the show uh, there's anything you need to know is in that link go have a look at it other than that moving on to today's guest a very very good friend of mine who I haven't chatted to in ages so I was very excited to sit down with my mighty friend comedian and highly intelligent person it's Jim Elliot. Jim of the Elliots I <laughs> Jesus Christ I just heard myself back there Jim <laughs> Oh, you got an echo going? Yeah, no, just uh-huh. I, 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 it was just that moment I went, fuck, I've never been impressed by my own voice before. Fair play to me. <laughs> I'm just going around saying Jim Elliott for the rest of the you just, week. You just, you just turned yourself on a little bit. I'll You're be like, back oh in a moment, God, Jim. I sound amazing. Pause. I'll just press pause here. That's Why? amazing. No, that was good. <laughs> Thanks very much. Hey, what's the crack? As I'm pretending now like we haven't been talking for a half an hour beforehand because that's what mm-hmm. podcasts do. They pretend like we just hit hey. the uh, call. Hey, what's happening? Hey, hey, what's happening? Everybody loves a bit of Jim. Everybody mm. loves Jim. Many times returning. Are you drinking this evening? Are you I am head- not. Are you I not? am not. It's uh, well because I just I just got back. I was on holidays last week, so I was drinking every night and it, every day really. And so now I was like, all right, I'm gonna take. Uh, I got back on Sunday. I'm just gonna wait until Friday. Just a week <laughs> of look at this. Not only am I not drinking, I'm drinking water. It's got limes floating in it, man. I'm trying to get more vitamins everywhere I can. Wow. Do you know what I need to bring you up? I need to bring you up uh, like a f- five liters of this stuff. It's, what is that? Um, it's actual spring water, actually out of a mountain. Not like the brand spring water. No, 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 like no. Like pulled it, from a spring. Actually yeah. from rocks coming out of a mountain. Yeah. It makes, un- if nothing else, right? If you go, oh yeah, okay. But you, the first thing is you won't smell, you know, you can, well, you can kind of smell and not getting all, well, we can talk conspiracies in a minute, but you know all the stuff you can oh, smell boy. from water. But yeah, yeah all the stuff makes, they're putting in the water. It makes unbelievable coffee. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it makes coffee it does. way smoother for some reason. I well, we know the reason. There's no shit in yeah. it. Now there's probably a couple of I don't know, maybe frogs' toes or something in it. I, there's definitely something floating at the bottom of it. I'm not sure what, but it, it's, it's all nutrients. right. It's you ever all... do the uh, when you get a, a cup of coffee somewhere and the coffee sucks and it's bitter? You know that really shitty yeah. bitter taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what fixes that? Go on. A little pinch of salt. I. Do you know what? That's like I'm a memory kidding. has come up from somewhere. Yeah. 
it's salt it takes this because you know what I, I, I don't know why I don't know the chemicals but it works because I well I don't know the what I got a disgusting coffee one time and in, in it was a un, well-to-do joint in Scotland oh, I'm um, sure but and everybody else's coffee smelt great. I went, oh yeah, I'll get a coffee. It's, it's just the kid making it was asleep at the switch for five minutes. It, it was It wasn't even. He went over and I didn't. I should have specified. Hey, uh, I'll have a hug and a flat white or an American. I just said a coffee, and he went straight to the you know the glass fucking thing that's filtered. Yeah, the filter coffee. Well, that shit must have been filtered since the Tuesday beforehand, because <laughs> it was. That just makes it better. That's that's the way coffee's supposed to be. That's what I have in my house. I got the drip. Filter from the New York uh, like cafe fishing, you know, hot, top you off there, hun. Like that, that type of shit. That's what I got. Because that's walk, coffee to me. Walking the around the house with machines. your, no, no, your no. apron on, like just, yeah. just with yeah, a couple yeah, yeah. of pencils in your hair. <laughs> yep, with those little ceramic mugs with the giant, with the giant hoops on them. They don't actually hold that much coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Sit no, down I, next I, to a, a murder homicide detective sitting there, yeah. just haunted by his own demons. Yeah, that kind and of the stuff. food is always so quick in those fucking diner things, isn't it? And the and the menu is an encyclopedia. They have everything. What do you want? Do you want eggs and lobster? We can do that. Like we, they have everything. And would you like it in forty four seconds? Mm. Well? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, yeah. it was a, it was after while I drank that coffee because it was during a meeting where I'm supposed to pay attention to everything that was being said Got to it. me. And so I drank said coffee every I milliliter made me want to crap my pants like not even normal coffee kind of get things moving like yeah. oh I'm drinking poison yeah uh, my uh, body hates this it was it was I, I can't remember who I said it to afterwards I think it was my one of my parents were like oh you put a grain of salt and I'm like well mm. yeah. yeah thank I, you now I could have used that information eight hours ago yeah oh yeah because quite literally my body was telling me the truth as mm -hmm. soon as that meeting ended yep. I had to go missing but it was at the same time are you the weirdo for going, hey, would you pass me the salt? They're like, yeah, yeah. And now you have to tell the whole story of salt in your coffee. I mean, yeah, maybe. Just put salt in your coffee and, and give anybody this stink eye who wants to look at you. What? Fuck you. I'm not making you drink it. True. True. Yeah. So, so, Jim, are, you're the hmm. you're from America, obviously. Yep. Uh, you literally have a coffee. Have I not lost the accent yet? Uh, you know what? You fucking yeah. ha you just sound like a 12 year old Irish kid. That's what well, you that's sound like thing. right now. I do. I will put on a little bit of an Irish twang. <laughs> on a uh, Irish cadenced or sequence of words. Yeah. Like what I just said there, have I not lost the accent? That's not an American thing. No, you it's not. Say, Haven't I lost the accent yet? Yeah. Have you not? Have I not? That's that's an Irish thing. And whenever I put together an Irish uh, uh, sequence, there will be a little lilt of something in there. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. So they, they, the hot conspiracy at the minute is that they have found alien craft in Antarctica. I don't know why I jumped straight into that, but it was Ooh. in that. A NASA bloke, anyway. Um, he was apparently the whistleblower, and he's saying, "Look at, I'm just saying, I'm just saying," and I'm kind of going, "I'm all for this. I am all for this. I'm all for it. I'm all for it." But like to me, until it matters, it doesn't matter. No, you know what I mean. Yeah. Until they're marching down uh, O'Connell Street with guns, pulling a full Mars attacks on it, who cares? Oh, did you find an old shipwreck in Antarctica? <laughs> Great. What am I supposed to do with that? Do I still have to go to work tomorrow? Because it sounds like I still have to go to work tomorrow. And if that's the case, then I don't care. Jim just shits all over 90% of yeah. the internet right now. We're going, Fucking uh, is it, it going to cost cares? me money? Is it going to cost me any? Oh, I don't. Does, it, does, it, does it matter? It, uh, let me turn the question around. Does it matter to you, Mr. Person blogging about this? Yeah. Do you still have to go to work tomorrow? Yeah. What's going on? Are your kids <laughs> still not talking to you? Or is this going to be the thing that brings them back? What are we hoping for here? Oh, I had a flat earther on the podcast one time. And he oh, for had a, real flat earther? Oh, for, I, for, I feel like half of those dudes are just doing it because it's nice to have a hobby. I, and you're like, ah, yeah, you know. I do feel a lot of these guys, regardless, when they're so deep in and then you find a bit out about them, they're scarred from something else. You know, yes. that kind of way. This, and this, you know, Yeah, this is because Jennifer left. That's what and, happened. And I think Jennifer may have left this gentleman. Many Jennifers, mm -hmm. I'd say, had left this mm -hmm. gentleman. But he was, oh, no, you, Jim, you have to watch this episode. It, you will, knowing me, right, trying to hold a straight face, because I went, do I go balls out at this guy? I don't want to, because they're harmless enough, I'll yeah. right? So it's you a, just hit him with the like, huh? Yeah, I never thought about it that way. And then every so often, I'd hit him with like topographical. Yeah. Coming, from, coming from my yeah. background, I'd hit him with like topographical questions, and you go, 
yeah, but what you have, right? And he this, yeah. but it turns out like he's big. This guy, he's actually big on. Uh, he approached me, but he's big on conspiracy. I've heard his name be mentioned of Joe Rogan and stuff. Like he's wow. big, David okay. Weiss. But his big thing was the wall. There's a big wall, Jim. There's a wall. <laughs> There's a wall. A wall where? That's like the... as as a. So we're a flat Earth. There's yeah. a wall over it, like a dome. Now or like around like this. He, he couldn't say for certain what that it was a dome, right? Because okay. he couldn't. But there's definitely a wall when you there's a wall keeping us in like a biscuit tin. And above you if you nobody can climb the ice, sure. And anybody that did, yep, yeah, sure. Anybody that did, when they did climb the ice and they got across Antarctica, because you're not allowed you're not even allowed to fly over Antarctica now. Or Antarctica. What? <laughs> Whichever one, you're not allowed to fly over either one of them. And yeah, he he basically said there's many more continents beyond that. When you drop down uh, off oh. that wall on the far side, you know what I mean. So but it's a we're big... trapped here in our what was that Jim Carrey movie? Yes, was... yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, okay. I but we're just we're just on our own little sound stage. But there's a bunch of other ones. It's a bunch of other ones, and I was like, uh, "Have we met?" And they were like, mm, "No." No, they won't let us meet. Fuck it anyway, like, they could be really good looking over there, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Could be, or really ugly and make us feel good about ourselves, like the Shelbyville. You know Imagine I mean? you started thinking about rugby. I wonder if there's any fast guys we can put them on the wing. We'd have, have an advantage out here. Are you are you a rugby? Because you're one of the, like, I don't know, like, as soon as an Ireland match or whatever we'll play, there's a handful of people that for some reason I seem to be uh, the sounding board for memes for... Yeah. Peter if I O'Mahony. see anything funny about rugby, I'm not sending well, it to it's, anybody but you, dude. It's Peter O'Mahony. Like, Colin Geddes will immediately, like, fanboy out, like, if he ki- tries to kill somebody. And Which you're like, he does every time. He does <laughs> like every time. There's two other people that just immediately send me Peter O'Mahony memes of him choking somebody. Yep. <laughs> yep. He's great. I, I, would, I would rather have, like, Suge Knight or I'd rather have <laughs> Suge Vladimir Knight. Putin mad at me. I would rather have both those dudes be like, fuck Jim Elliott than Peter O'Malley. I'm terrified of that guy. I don't he, ever want him to be mad at me at all. That's and awful. he sells it so well with the backstory as well, being so uh, somber, like Thanos, like planting shit. Mm. And you're like, mm-hmm. and with one click of his finger, he would destroy half the universe. Like, <laughs> You don't pay any attention to basketball, do you? I don't. They're far no. too t- tall. The, the, the the uh the team from Denver just won the championship last night, but their their best player and the best player in the league right now is a Serbian dude by the name of Nikola Jokic. Oh and yes, the yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, but he gave all these hilarious interviews last night because they won the championship, and this is the first time Denver's ever won the championship. And so the every, the whole everybody's crying and hugging each other, and the coach is holding other players. Thank you for believing in me, coach. And he's like, oh, you did it yourself, kid. Like a real tears, and he's just stone faced. Like this. And then he has to give the interview afterwards. He's wearing the hat that says champs on it. And the people in the crowd are like, there's a great clip. You'll, I'm sure you'll find it on the internet. He goes, uh, are you excited for the parade? Because after you win a title, they, they have a parade through the town. Right. And he goes, are you excited for the parade? And he just looks at him and goes, parade. And he turns off stage and he looks to somebody who works for the team. And he's like, what day is the parade? And the guy goes, Thursday. And he goes, oh, Thursday. I just want to go home. <laughs> and then he goes into this rant because he does. He just wants to go back to Serbia and hang out with his brothers and ride horses. That's all yeah. he wants to do. That's all he cares about. And he said that he was like, listen, I'm very proud of the team and of the organization. Uh, this is the goal of their job, but uh, it's just a job. And there's more important things in the world. And also everybody hates their job. So, I mean, I, maybe some people like their job, but they're lying. And, and I'm like, this guy, every <laughs> other player, like you watch these Kobe documentaries where Kobe is like, oh, basketball is everything. Yeah. You never stop and blah, blah, blah. And they go, then Joke is like, it's a living, you know, it's fine. It'd be like trying to interview a builder after they finish building the hotel. And like, how are you? you feeling good? And he's like, well, it's 430. Do I have to stay or can I go now? Like, <laughs> I love I it. It's great. It's I great. Love he doesn't care. There's, He's just stone faced. But you know that that's something I suppose in in the West that we kind of forget about ourselves, isn't it? Like we think, oh my god, everything we think and do is what everybody does. And you meet <laughs> like you meet lads from Kosovo and stuff, and they're like, no, yeah, it's, this is a game, <laughs> and I happen to be six foot eleven, so they sign me. But uh, you know, it beats <laughs> digging ditches. But let's not let's not go crazy here. Like yeah. that that's the good thing though I have noticed about. Uh, American sports is that especially with football I know that like the Patriots went on a run like they were fucking, mm. what did they get a five in a row or something something like that yeah 
but you, there does seem to be a good variance at least of like in rugby there's just four that'll yeah. in european rugby there's four well, you guys, to it's six. a real like the rich get richer type of thing and yeah where they, they, you know it, it's almost impossible to conceive of how a smaller club would establish the infrastructure to compete with a toulouse or a monster or something mm. you know what i mean to come out of nowhere but they got all these things in american sports with with salary caps and you're only allowed to spend so yeah, much money yeah, yeah. and they they take it so the worst teams in every league get the best shot at the best players coming out of college or the smaller leagues so is that the way the draft yeah. works then right so yeah, that yeah, boys, yeah. that's see, that's yep. kind of class like san antonio was terrible terrible they've been terrible for three or four years but this year they were legendarily terrible and now they get the number one pick so they're going to draft this seven foot two french guy who is the, who will be the biggest player in the league but also the best shooter in the league like he, he's unstoppable right now well we don't know we've not seen him play in the league but he's he's the most excited talent for years and years and years and the worst team in the league gets him and so, how long right. how long will they hold on to him now you know what i mean like would, would they get, His, a, the like they'll get a year off three years oh. so they'll get at least three years and then if they can convince him to stay and build a good infrastructure around him and convince him that this is your best chance for success. And also the team that drafts you, you can offer them more money than anyone else can. Not by much. Somebody else will offer you 400 million and they can offer you 420 million. So it's $20 million, but you've already got 400. So, you know, but they, they do try to make it. So like if you draft somebody, they make it easy for you to keep them. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. And it, it's purely money. Like, I mean, as you talk about it out of nowhere, like, uh, Raj brought La Rochelle from nothing to winning it twice. You yeah. know what I mean? But fucking Daddy Warbucks stood in too. It wasn't just okay. You know, now yeah. the French all have rake have rakes of money. They've all got sugar daddies, like because, well, yeah, because they you know, they're all owned by like oil billionaires, billionaires yeah. right? Yeah. Billionaires are lads who own hair products from the 1800s. Do you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> like it's it's ludicrous. Like they go, oh, okay, I will yeah. give you. Two more million for a player, but you know, and it, but... so how did how did they how did they convince? Because I remember when Sexton went over to France, but then he came back. Yeah, how did they, they how did they make that work as what worth as well? Or was uh, that just he he was like I'm sick of living here. Fuck it, I'll go back. Wait, there's a I don't know how long you have to play in France, but there's a, a weird tax thing, right? If you play, like Simon Zebo is back in Munster and he's just having the time of his life because he ain't starting. But he's just fucking running riot at uh, hey, training. He better not be having too much fun. But yeah, but he, no, he's about 17 children actually now. I think he's all settled down and all the rest of it. But yeah, boys, you know, but he was, he came back. He gets some sort of huge tax thing, like huge. He gets all his tax back that he paid, paid, paid in France. Oh. Yeah. Once you pay over two years, I think in France, there's kind of this bursary thing that's set aside for you for when you retire from rugby. And you get this fucking wedge. Oh, wow. Right? But like Sexton, the problem with Sexton was when they brought him over, they were like, uh, Le Johnny, you will play every week. And I mean, uh, fucking twice on Tuesdays. Uh, okay, so yeah. get the fuck out there or you, you know. You, and we will knowing you. that you're the target and everybody's just trying to knock you out. Everybody's. Of the every, and in France, like you could shoot a man on the field and yeah. possibly uh, the cameras would not pick it up. Like they don't give a fuck in France. Like they don't give. I I love their attitude. Like I Bernard Jackman, who coached Grenoble on the podcast, and he was telling me yeah. like day one he went, "We're going right, guys. We're going fucking doing this, and fucking we're going to have this." And a fella like put him aside. He was like, uh, "Mr. Bernard, <laughs> I would shut the fuck up and just play. Just let them play." Like he was at the break in training. Hmm. He see the he saw the you know the fitness and the, the the people putting out all the growth, you know, ready, thinking they were going to put out like, you know, pasta, you know, for carbs just to fucking bust on through the day thinking he was going to see, you know, fucking inner, you know, proteins yeah. and stuff uh, like that and green beans, because we're going to eat outside, it was a nice day not at all, there was fucking caviar, there was fucking salami sausage, there was fucking baguettes, lads were having a fag and just maybe a complete, a, they're still smoking, supple, that's oh, hilarious I love a wine. professional athlete who still smokes man, I think that's so funny isn't it class? But you, yeah. like some guys can pull it off, just still have the odd fag, like, you know, I, like just. And the odds are good that they're going to be French if that's, if that's oh. who's going to get away with it. Maybe the Italians. Definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. But do you know what? In France, too, they'll probably end up being really good at rugby, but still, meh, meh, just yeah. give it to. Yeah. What do you, exactly. and he, he was just told, what, there's nothing you can do. That you mm. will not change their attitudes. Just, they're just, or you can. This is going to be a terrible fucking time for you. Just let them smoke their fags, have That's their baguette, really funny. 
and a sup of wine and they'll get back to training afterwards. So relax. <laughs> oh, I love it. But Good it, times. But like that, it was it was money. Money is all you can throw at it. But I lo- I loved it. I never fully understood the the draft, and I've watched enough programs and documentaries about mm-hmm. American football, mm-hmm. so and and basketball, like. But yeah, yeah. because everybody watched the Last Dance, you because know? they're sporting, you can't but be inspired by those psychopaths, like you know what yeah. I mean. But I actually but, turned on a documentary last night, and I only I only watched the first episode of it, but I'm gonna watch the whole thing now because they suck me in. It's on the Tour de France, and I have never paid attention to cycling really? other than the Icarus all. thing. I never at all. No, I did. I watched that one about, but that wasn't about cycling. That was about drugs and true. spying and yeah, stuff true. like that, that yeah. you know. Uh, but this is a, I guess it's like a, a six or seven episode thing that follows them through the Tour de France. And the way they set it up where they're like, they're different rival clubs and then the different dramatic stories within the clubs. Like this club, his stud had a, a crash two years ago where he broke every bone in his face. And like, and and now he's back for the first time, but people don't believe in him and how they pick him. It's a, it's a, I don't Probably should have looked up the name of it before I started this rant, but it's on Netflix and it's a it's a, how many Tour de France documentaries? Could it's there one possibly of the, be? it's one of the first ones that kept on popping up, even yeah. on like my my channel mm-hmm. will have clandestine carry on and it's whatnot. Worth, it, but it's, it's worth Natasha's out, channel, which has a lot of uh, house programs and whatnot, horror Netflix. Hey man, but we still... just finished the new Bridgerton too, so I'm all over the map. Yeah, yeah I'm all yeah, over the map. Yeah. I'm watching all of it. I, Did yeah, you watch I, Bridgerton? I couldn't sit through it, to be honest. I, I, I was still on the flip of um, coming off the back end of Downton Abbey. Uh, this and is so was, much better than Downton Abbey. I, I know It's doubt. making fun of these people. It's yeah, great. I had no doubt. And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, there's fucking too much British things in my life now. I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it. It's <laughs> yeah, no, just, I got you. I do got you know you. what I mean? It was like, oh, yep. Jesus Christ. There's God, a limit to how much, how much Britishness you can take. Can we just go watch something American or fucking Australian or something for now? Mm. Like, can we please? Christ almighty. Like, But it, it's, it looked, and I do, I the, the fact that they had the, the girl from Derry Girls in it. I was going to watch her purely on because she's very funny. <laughs> Isn't she, from, she's from Cork, I think, orig- originally. You got me, but uh, I'm the blonde, sure you're right. The blondie little funny one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and for that, I was going to watch it, but then, no, it was just too much Britishness. And and Downton Abbey had fuck that had burnt me. Downton out. Abbey was one that uh, by the end of I don't even think we finished. I don't even think we got it halfway through the last season because we realized that they were on such a form. They had a it, it, this happens to a lot of TV shows. They had a great plot for the first season. Mm. They had a well structured plot with with yeah. different lines coming through, and they did not think they were going to get renewed. So they never yeah. wrote anything. They, yeah, they so, shot their shot. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, they do yeah. great. And and the company and Netflix is like, all right, here's money. Here's four more seasons of this. And they're just pulling shit out of the air to try to make a show about it. So after a while, every single episode of Downton Abbey, the first 10 minutes were something's wrong and we're going <laughs> to lose the Abbey. We're going to have to sell. Either it's a shipwreck or a landslide or a plague or a revolt or a whatever, but there's something wrong. And then we're all worried about it, worried about it, worried about it. And then two minutes before the end of the episode, it just gets solved because somebody who we've never seen before walks in and goes, Old Grandpa Charlie, who you never heard about, died and left us money, and now we're fine. Do 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 do. On to the next episode. So it got to be like an episode of Cheers. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like it was just. This, I was like, this is a sitcom <laughs> plot on an hour long thing with a big movie budget. Like, what the hell are we talking about out here? But yeah, I I I, and I did disappoint when I talk about big big budget things. I went to because I was you were Game of Thrones too, were you? We watched the first season and then we watched the second season. And we, or we got three episodes in and we're like, you know, you did because you, I have no attention span. We paused and got some drinks. And as we're sitting down to settle back in, Lisa goes, I don't care about any of these people. And I was like, oh, thank yeah, God, me enough. neither. I, yeah. I don't give a shit what happens to any of them. The only person I care about is the baby dragon. Like, yeah. so I, I would dip in and out and watch like an episode if it was dragon heavy because I like watching dragons fly around and, and beat people up. But I could have done give a crap. 10 minutes of an episode. Of each one, just move me on. Because yeah. the thing is, I'd read the books as a child, so uh, that was the only thing that I stayed with. I went, ah, but the books are very good. Will we? And it was got increasingly worse. It was like, oh, mm. and by the time they got to the end, you're like, oh, fine, we're grand. I loved. And, I did enjoy watching because I'm a very online person. I did enjoy watching the meltdowns that the fans had, how yeah. upset everybody was, and how shite the ending was. And uh, and what's really funny about it is that the ending was so bad. That it collectively scrubbed from memory how good it was before that. Yeah. Because it was yeah, like yeah. a cultural powerhouse to the extent that 
you could drop you people comics were dropping game of thrones references into bits that had nothing to do with game of thrones like every you know any promo for a new dishwashing liquid would be like dragons and swords like it was really it was really setting the tone but it was so bad that that immediately stopped that immediately stopped and everybody yeah. dropped it so. i couldn't to be honest with you the way it ended i was like oh yeah that's true. what else could the boys do at that stage you would run out yeah. of ideas burn it uh, all up what could you do at that stage that's exactly what I would do. I would go, we've made our money, haven't we? Yeah, oh, and they want to like, do a couple of spin-offs. We, oh, Grant. We Grant, have to Grant. force them to not be able to renew the show. How do we do it? Kill everybody. Let's <laughs> yeah, make like it's the end of a Shakespearean tragedy and everybody's dead. Yeah, because they, they, they had the spin-off and I lasted half an episode mm-hmm. and literally was like that. Nat- Natasha and myself were watching. She was like, God, I, 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 I'd seen her run into that wall. I'm like, yeah, this yeah. is, beyond this is, this, is yeah, could. this now is I felt like an old guy at a in a youthful bar do you know you're gone dude yes pack it, pack it in pack it in oh dude that okay there's a there's a Tipperary bar on Camden Street Ryan's yeah and I very much one of my favorite things to do is to sit in a bar by myself and drink mm-hmm. about three pints and read a book delicious Absolutely. and that's a delicious. gorgeous bar beautiful bar to do it in yeah but for the first since since living where I live I live pretty close to Camden Street and the September, October, November, I can't do that in there yeah. because I come in around five, I sit down, I, I find a seat and a nice place. And then the place fills up with 17 and 18 year olds who are up to go to UCD. Yeah. And, and it, for a half a minute, I'm like, oh, cool. Young people. They're yeah. like me. I'm because when I walked into <laughs> the pub, I was the young guy. Yeah. Because everybody else there is 60 years old and they're reading yeah, the yeah, racing yeah, 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 post yeah. and they're watching the horses on TV. And I'm like, look at these guys. None of them knows how to use their phone. And then I, I read my book and I see these kids come in. And I'm like, okay, cool, kids. All right, great. I might get another pint, but first I'm going to go to the bathroom. And you go in and you look at yourself in the mirror and you go, ah, oh God, <laughs> I got to get out of here. I, I, I got to get out of here before one of these kids is like, sir, do you know a lawyer? I can, oh like, my oh, God, God. Yeah. I gotta, yeah, no. These, these people are not for me. You can blame but the during two- the summertime, they're all out of there. It becomes a lovely pub again. You can blame the two Johnnies for that because they make reference to it all the time. Like, and is that's that why. Because that that's only what's started happening. happening. Yeah. That's, and now sons it, of bitches. And you know, what's, you know what's hilarious? I was in there. I was doing a show in Whelan's one time. Mm. And it's right next to it. And I used to like popping in there. Yeah. I, but I never really. Because again, I used to live just over the road from where you yep, are yep, now. Yep, I remember. And. I was in there and I went in with a, a mate of mine, Morgan, and we were, he's from Tipperary. He went, this is Tipperary bar. I went, Mog, every second Morgan bar around here is Tipperary. It seems to be a thing to nail your call. I said, what's the betting? The owners aren't even from Tip. And I said it to your man Ooh. behind the counter. I went, are you, are you on the place? He went, yeah, well, you know, it's the wife's originally. And yeah, yeah. I went, are you from Tip? He went, nah, it's the wife. Nah. I went, why are you doing the whole Tip thing? He goes, it makes money. It's a thing. <laughs> to the, it's like, it's like it's, I'm from Vienna. I'm yeah. a poet, but I met this girl. <laughs> <laughs> what about the hurling up the premier? I'm like, yes. what? The f-? But it, it, I think her family, but they just hung on to the whole temporary vibe because for some reason, there's when you look at it, there's a fucking break of them. There's when you actually this should be an investigation for you because you are around town. Yeah, there start in Chaplin's. Remember there used to be a comedy club yeah, in Chaplin's. Yeah, yeah. Start there yeah. and they will tell you. They'll name them all out for you. Because I was in the, Chaplin's. I, I always remember Chaplin's was such a, uh, uh, not to use the pejorative term, but it was such a culty bar mm. that uh, the Sam McGuire would pass through there, and the, and the, I forget the name of the one for the hurling. Liam What's McCarthy. The, yeah, the Liam McCarthy. Those cups were passing through there so often that I saw them once or twice. And I was like, <laughs> I'm not a fan. I mean, I'm kind of a fan, but I'm not a fan enough for this to be as big a deal as it should. And I'm like, well, what the fuck? Because it's not that nice a bar. It's no. fine. But Grumpy it's nothing old special. Bastards. Yeah. yeah. And but so what the hell are people doing bringing this stuff in here? But you telling me that they are down country legends yeah. of a of a pub and an established place. But that, that makes sense because people come up to Dublin and they need to know where to go. Mm hmm. You know, so they talk to people yeah. in their hometown before they leave. They're like, all right, well, where should I go for it? And they're like, ah, Ryan's or Chaplin's. Like, they, mm. these, you know, they're not experimental type of people. They're not going to walk by somewhere and go, I've never heard of this. Let's give it a shot. 
Maybe they've got a lovely portobello mushroom burger I can try. You know, this I, this is the thing. I guarantee you there are places that have no affiliation whatsoever. We're like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. we just want to make some money. So uh, yeah, because I because yep. uh, what st- struck me was I uh, saw a poster in yeah. the toilet before heading upstairs to the club, and I went the t- the Dublin. Wait, I get this right. The Tipperary Dublin Pub Owners Association. Right, I went. What the fuck? Does, and they were having like a golf society day. I'm like, Tf-. so I, I I barely had ever spoken to the man behind the bar. And I went, there. And he, then he, he kind of, because he'd always been rude to me. So I went, <laughs> what's the crack with the, and he heard my accent. And he was like, you're from Tip. I, went, uh-huh. I am from Tip, yeah. He went, oh. so I You gave him it. the stonecutter's handshake like Homer yes. did. And then they yeah, got, yeah. yeah. But he, because I was enunciating my words, my, because I had a better attitude than he had, to be fair, mm. more than anything, he was just grumpy. But he kind of filled me in. And then Trey's Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Her her dad is, you know, and yeah. she went, oh, did you not know about that? Oh, that's a big thing. Like, literally, it was a set thing in the 50s that if you didn't get the farm, you didn't get sent teaching, you didn't go into the, something civil service or the priesthood. Yeah. Um. You up just to work. Dublin work in somebody's pub exactly and don't come back till you fucking own one basically I'm sure he like I remember talking with Mick wow. and he he literally did not know there was to have a day off in seven years his first because they worked him that hard seven days a week including Christmas days because that would be the day you deep clean the bar right and there might be oh a couple of sneaky pints as well and he worked seven day seven years straight before somebody went you should probably go down home no wonder uh, he's such a grumpy bastard. Dude. Yeah, yeah. But no wonder <laughs> oh he's so wealthy. God. No wonder he's so wealthy. Yeah. Like, but it's oh, if that's what it takes, man. I'm never going to be wealthy. I don't have yeah. that drive in me. I don't have it. I like a weekend, man. Yeah. Where are we uh, on holidays again, Jim? Oh. Uh, Jim, you need to do a, a travel blog po- podcast hey, of some dude, sort. There is nowhere in the world we, we got no kids, and it's like we what to do. it's what we like to do. So uh, we were in Greece. We were in Santorini. Nice. Um, let's, we'll see if we can get a uh, an Aer Lingus sponsorship on this. Did you know that Aer Lingus I now have direct flights from Dublin straight to Santorini? These sunny isles of Greece can be yours for one three and a half hour flight, no stopovers. The Aer Lingus Dublin to Santorini five times a week. I'm sold. I'm sold. I want to go, dude. To Greece. You should go. I want to go to Greece because I have no interest in uh, Spain's or Portugal's. I'm sure they're lovely, uh, but I want no, to go to Greece. Wrong? Greece is Greece is incredible. I don't, got, I don't know why. Got... Do you, you know when you have something in your head, you're like, I Greece just looks lovely. It, it just looks lovely. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. So okay, so we're on the island of Santorini, and if you if you you know what it is, it's one of your windows backgrounds when you start your computer. Yes, that's how pretty yes. it is. It's Christ, got the it's right. got the all the the towns are built into the side of the cliffs, and they're all painted white. And there's a couple of tiny little churches with domes, and the domes are all painted bright blue. It's built for Instagram. Oh God, yeah. they, they must have tripled their their tourist budget since Instagram came out because some of the streets on them, the streets with the perfect little view where the houses all line up, and then there's the dome, and you can stand uh, like this. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Those were pretty crowded, but uh, but outside of that, it wasn't bad at all because it's kind of early in the year. You know what I mean? A lot of people are still still dealing with schools and families and crap. But uh, it was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. We had a, a taxi guy tell me that the reason the buildings are all white now he could have been bullshitting me. I'll believe it. I don't care. It's a good story. Um, but the story is is that during the plague, not the one that you and I lived through, the oh, uh, they, the, the original one, uh, they figured out that if you lime washed all the walls. Then, uh, then that would make it a bit cleaner and and halt the spread of disease, or at least that's what they believe. So they did that. They they lime washed all the walls, and then every British tourist and everybody went back to France. Is like you wouldn't believe this town. It's beautiful, and the sun sets, and the buildings are all painted bright white. They're all painted bright white, and so it just looks incredible with the sunset, and they all turn pink. And then they realize, oh my God, we're onto a, a winner here. Like your like your fake country pub. Yeah. And they're like, okay. Uh, by order of whatever government it is, if you own a building in this town and it's ever not bright white, you, we are taking it from you. So <laughs> that's it. You keep it clean. You keep it spotless. They, it must be like, I can't imagine how often they have to paint those things. It's like that thing with the, you know, the Golden Gate Bridge, how they never stop painting it. They yeah. just start at one end and they paint it and it takes them a year to paint it. So then they start it again and they just paint it. They're just constantly painting the Golden Gate Bridge to keep it red. Well, my, my, I remember whitewashing uh, my, grandparents farm walls they were always and at least twice a year it would need it but this yeah. stuff like because it was lime it was essentially like a cement in its own right yeah I think walls actually got stronger as a result of it because they it yeah. would sh- like a, I guess yeah a, it's going to build up like way truck. more than paint would oh wait well, like this was a truck or something 
I think it must have been a truck, like hit off a wall one time. And I can remember it was like an inch and a half thick of this lime wash paint. Like, oh, you can just build a shitty wall with and then next to no mortar. twice and a year. Before you know it, a decade later, you've actually got a decent wall with a structure, actually some load bearing capacity. Right. I think I, I think I stayed in an apartment in Dublin when I first moved there where the uh, the builders took that attitude, but with wallpaper. <laughs> they were like, if we keep putting more wallpaper on this bastard, then we won't need to install heating because it'll just sweat. Yeah, you do wonder what Dublin has in that Santorini has. That you're like, well, come to Dublin. No, come to Santorini. Oh, I think oh. I'll go to Dublin. It's got so much more. Yeah, it's that's the, the thing. You, if, when you're somewhere like that and you come back to Dublin, I love Dublin. I absolutely love living here. When I'm away from Dublin for too long, I actually miss it. You know what I mean? Which is, yeah. I I remember the first time that happened, I was on a two-week trip with business thing to San Francisco and then off somewhere else. And halfway through, I was like, God, I just, I'd love to walk down a damp street and go to a pub. You know, like I was having a great time, but I missed it. But then this time we, we get back from Dublin and we, we flew in. So we arrive at 2.30 in the morning on Sunday morning. So yeah. everybody's still out. And it's just a taxi to get home. I'm like, we are just the garbage is piled up and everybody's hammered. And I was like, oh, Christ. If we'd have gotten home, it's three hours later, it would have been fine. Would have been yeah. quiet. Like, ah, the seagulls, you know, but the, we we were right. We drove right through the carnage of the town to, to get home. Ugh. It's, it's it's funny. Like I, I did like two gigs on two different weekends and I did a gig up. Um, it was a corporate that paid really well. So that kind of brightens nice. your outlook, right? But it was just off of um, William Street. So I parked in the mm-hmm. Drury Street car park. Okay. I know it. Parking space right there. And trouble free. Walked out. A lot of haze again. It's everywhere. Like a lot of people who think they're on Selling Sunset. Like you're yeah. kind of going, re- relax, let's. It's still fucking Ireland. But at the same time, okay, I get you. I get you. But put some socks on for the Christ's sake and stop rolling up your trousers. <laughs> you're not fucking. You're 30 odd. Come on. Dude, man. have you seen... Have you seen the socks that you want that you wear when you want to make it look like you're not wearing socks? Oh, I have, yeah. I have, Jim. They, they infuriate me. It's five toes, and it goes about halfway up the arch, and it stops there. <laughs> it's so funny. Natasha bought them for me, like, a couple <laughs> of years ago. She's like, what, as, he... a, as a gag? I think she, yeah, I think sometimes she buys me things. She's like, uh, he'll either get angry at this, which is also funny, or yeah, funny. maybe. Or he might use it. He might use it. And she bought me these socks, and I, oh. I'm like, did she I clearly? I thought thought they were for my child. I'm like, yeah, he doesn't need socks yet. He's all right. He's like, one. Yeah. She's like, no, they're for you. I'm like, in what what fucking universe do I put these on? She's like, oh no, they finish right below the the top of your trainer, mm. and I will suffer, chafing, woman. <laughs> this is not. No, 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 no. <laughs> Once I pass like the twenty one mark, that shit goes out the window. Now. I have to wear my clothes angry and sore. I cannot. Oh. I cannot venture into this world. Dude, um, I was talking about that with somebody. Where con- country guys have a real rigorous application of discipline when it comes to their dress codes. They don't take no new ideas. You get looked at weird if you wear sunglasses down the country. They're like, it, you should just squint. Like, yeah, just go yeah, yeah. Like this. The fuck's wrong with you? The fuck's wrong with you? Well, You're setting yourself up for a fall as soon as they outlaw it's sunny sunglasses. Sometimes as you soon can as put on yeah, sunglasses, ah, like the twelve days of the year. Like it, as soon as they outlaw sunglasses, Jim, where will you be then? You won't be used to squinting. Who's gonna outlaw? Oh, oh, Jim, <laughs> you've seen enough crazy stuff over the last two years. If they come after our sunglasses, you come know after the sunglasses. <laughs> I have a conspiracy theory that I like that nobody on your podcast is going to get. I don't know if you want to brought it up. Uh, Michael Jordan is Jimmy Butler's father, secretly. Jimmy Butler plays for the Heat. It doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, here's one. Here's one that you might uh, that okay. I do like. Here's a conspiracy theory that I like a lot. Butthead is Beavis's father. Wow. Because they live in in Beavis's house. Uh-huh. And Butthead's always calling his mom a slut. They never establish how old they are. The teachers seem to be more familiar with Butthead in the school than they are with Beavis. Like when Beavis kicks off, they're like, what's wrong with you? When Butthead kicks off, they're like, oh, Butthead, knock it off. And Butthead does imply sometimes that he's gotten laid before. And Beavis obviously never has. If I was to believe either two was after getting laid, it definitely was. It's yeah, definitely it was definitely Butthead. butthead. Yeah. 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 You don't know Ooh. that he's not older than him. He's Jesus, wearing an ACDC an... shirt that that predates Beavis's Metallica shirt by a lot. Oh, it does. Yeah, the mm. older gentleman would be into it more than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow, that's that's. I think you're. It's not even a conspiracy anymore. I'm one hundred percent chips across the table, all in yep. on that one, Jim. There's not uh, anyway for our '90s kids out there. 
<laughs> but to, to, I, I pull, I, you know what? You're being harsh on the country guys. There's there's real country, country lads, and they normally come from down the north more than anything. And they they're the ones who latch. They latch. Like I I don't mind wearing shorts in public. It's the silliness of the socks. It's like come on. Come on, mm. just wear comfortable flip flops or something. Like it's just what? What are you doing? Are you do you want to like? What, how fast do you think you need to be going? Like just, it's if you need to alter your socks, you're like, come on, come on. It does. There's, those... there's a fun part in every dude's life, and it's between like eighteen and twenty four, where you just pick up little affectations of stuff to be like, am I gonna be? Am I gonna be a fedora guy? Am I a fedora guy? I think you know. I, what I mean, maybe you yeah. even buy one. And you put it on and you're like, I'm going to wear this. And you like you try it out amongst a group of people you don't know. You go into a bar where you don't know anybody and you're like, this, this is normal, right? I'm just, I, I'm just a guy who wears fedoras. I never did full fedora. I mean, I did buy one, but and I wore it for about a month. And I was like, this is stupid. I I'm wore not, a waistcoat is... once and you gave me shit about it. It was cool looking. I, yeah, I know it was cool, shit, but you but gave me a load of shit about it. So I was like, uh-huh. I was right about this waistcoat. <laughs> Leave it at home. <laughs> I See, tried to play this back when I smoked. I used to think I was going to be a Zippo guy for a little while. Oh, there's lighter guys. And then there's Zippo guys. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. The yeah. Zippo is the Zippo's fun if, if you got ADD like me, because it does give you a little thing to play with. Mm. And you can learn little like tricks to pop it open and stuff like that. So that's kind of fun. But even that I was like, dude, who do you think you are? Come on. Yeah. Come on. You're not even really a smoker. So that was an affectation to begin with to layer on a, a on top of it. You know, you're not I... a detective. I I almost I get a little bit suspicious when I meet blokes that are they're that guy. You're like, mm. you, how God, how empty is your life that you just looks like a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're that guy. Like if I had to wear the socks, I'm like, all right, we gotta wear. It. Like if it's for, yeah, okay. But it's not that I'm going absolutely. I just thought they were the most hilarious that they looked like children's socks. Mm -hmm. like, and you know your entire life, Jimmy, you pulled on a t-shirt. If that t-shirt stopped just underneath your tits, which is what the socks were doing to me, they stopped <laughs> at the at the bony bit of my ankle. It was like, no. I don't know. Did come... you watch and... movies from the seventies? Dudes were wearing those. Yeah, but Dudes I'm were wearing did... crop top shirts. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they were. I'm sure they were, Jim. You're looking nice and svelte, man. How, how's your how's your six pack looking? If oh, it's it looks great, it's... It, it, would, I don't care. Would you want to wear? If I'm shredded. Six yeah. pack. I'm still not stopping short. Get that fucking uh, shirt down. No, it just comes. There comes a time when a man. I'm over forty years old, Jim. I can't. Mm -hmm. be, so you can't be doing that. You can't be doing that shit. You can't. Dude, I was. It was so hot outside today. I was walking. I was walking around outside my. Like I have a bunch of basketball jerseys. I was walking around outside my house in a basketball jersey and a bare shoulder on a man is something that in Ireland is a little is a little iffy. It's a little, it's a little touchy. It's a little risque. It's a little risque. It's a, it's risque, not in a sexy way, but in like a classist way. Oh you know? yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like, is yeah. this guy gonna steal the radio out of my car? And I'm like, fuck you. This is a vintage Patrick Ewing jersey from the New York <laughs> Knicks in 1994. Okay, this is this yeah, is but a real the fact thing. the fact that you could buy that replica jersey in Wall Street, like you could buy the replica yeah. jersey, but that's not what I have. If yeah. you were a if you were a person of of low character. Do you know what? There are probably enough people in Ireland nowadays who have, I, I, I don't know how or why, but they've adhered themselves so, maybe it's from their early childhood have been ignored and only left with the television. But hmm. we talked about like people's accents. There are those people that had 12 year old American accents are now in their 30s and 40s, have adhered themselves so hard hmm. to being American. Like they know, like they get so caught up with American politics. You're like, yeah, but you don't yes. know. Who you don't even know who your local minister is. What's that, that about? That is ridiculous to me. Like, especially Isn't that, that hilarious? Was the worst thing about Trump was, well, that was the worst thing about Trump, but that was a particularly local annoyance thing because it made a lot of people pay attention so much so that people were like, are you following the, the, the fourth representative's race out of the state of Delaware? And I'm like, no, why the hell would I, it does, none of this. Oh, I know people it, who went yeah. to America and everything like to celebrate Biden's inauguration. I'm like, what? Yeah. Well, could you not have done it at home, you mad yeah, fuck? Yeah, you could. You could have done it at home. I you it's, could have it, done it at home. And it, but it's this uh, like there's a whole family I know, and they have they've gone so deep into like the Seahawks. They've gone. Do they have? Is, is the mom or dad from? Are they not immigrants? Not at all. Not at all. Huh? Dublin, like, and they're so in. They, but they talk about Joe like they know him, like. <laughs> But sure, Joe doesn't know Joe. What are you fucking talking about, for Christ's sake? 
And they go like, oh my God, but what if, and they'd start naming like things about the, the sign of sort of stuff you get brought on news talk to type, talk yep, about primaries exactly. and stuff like that and the oh, collegiate dude, I vote. It. I got like, I got to, I got to call them and tell them we need to start up the political machine again. It's, it's, oh, and you're going, but at the same time, they've just raised our fucking taxes. Are you, are, have you, any, yeah, any, you have any, 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 any opinions about that? And, and, and that, no, no. There's I, I, several I, crises, crises, crisis going on in, in Ireland at the time. You got an opinion on the hospital bed shortage or the housing shortage? <laughs> Either? Yeah, anything? No, because no, it, it's it's not glamorous, you see. That's mm. the problem. It's not glamorous. Do you know what I mean? You got people with names like yours or people you grew up with, like Dara Murphy, is it? And you're like, no, ah. I need somebody with a Skazowski at the end of their name. I was kind of like, because I've been posting a bunch of, uh, yeah, look at me up online, Jim Elliott Comedy. I'm on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and all that crap. And I have been recently, because I like, I do follow politics and I follow Irish politics and I've been writing jokes yeah. about uh, about Enoch Burke and about every time there's a new housing uh, uh, scandal. Dude, if you are, if you work in government and you haven't declared all your rental incomes yet they're coming for you what's the matter with you anyway but i'll I'll do jokes about that and then i'll post them online and they'll get a little bit of traction sometimes because the people that are into political humor love mm. that there's somebody making fun of irish politicians but i had a theory i was like how come no other i don't know any other irish comic that will sit down and go out of their way to write material about like when leo got caught making out with some dude in a club yeah. nobody else had a joke about that i'm like nah. nobody's gonna write a joke about that that's hilarious my theory is that because ireland's so small Everybody knows somebody that's somehow related to that guy. Mm. And so like, well, I don't want to be making fun of poor Steve's brother-in-law. Then Steve will feel bad. You know what I mean? Like your circle is too small and you don't you're want probably, to you don't want to be seen to make fun of people. You're probably nicer about it than I am. And ah. probably closer to the to correct, but because my thing whole thing is that I don't know since kind of we joined the EU and everything, we've just been little brother. We've just been little brother and told what to do, patted on the fucking head. But and let's what are you be honest, about? you guys, you guys control our... your own destiny. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we I mean, have to the extent that anybody does. We're all un- we're all under the auspices of the uh, of the almighty dollar. Like, it's and by true. dollar, I just mean all of the money. It's that it's the big speech from the end of Network. When's the last yes. time you saw the movie Network? It was a good movie. There are no nations. There are no countries. There is no West. There are no Arabs. There is only money. One multivariate and systemic uh, oligarchy of dollars, petrodollars, shekels, pounds, and yen. And that's it. Uh, yeah. I love that film. It's it. You know what it is? But that's that's I, I do think there's that Irish people have never paid heavily to it. Again, it hasn't been glamorized, but you, I guarantee people here know more about what's going on in the UK. Probably. It's it just for whatever reason, it's around the clock on your phone or on Sky News or whatever. It's on, on, mm-hmm. on. You'll get a brief rundown on politics, the news here in Ireland, and that's it. Hmm. But you know what I mean? It's just skewed one way or the other. You know what I mean? They, but for some reason, Irish people have never seen a glamorous side to it. They were like, yeah, yeah, fucking fine. I, on, I, now I say Irish people, Good. not all, not all. Not all. I I think we just care more about sports. I, yeah. I just, I mean, political nerds are like, I'm from Washington, D.C. And so yeah. I followed it because it's in the air there. But then you, you meet somebody who like, I moved here from Nebraska because I wanted to be close to the like, like dude, I have to follow this stuff. Like, what what what's your excuse? You were you were a place with actual culture. I remember when a friend of mine moved to San Francisco. And he, was, he was my my best friend. And when he came back like a couple months after being there, we went out for a beer. And I was like, what's it like out there, man? He goes, dude. Nobody else talks about politics. Nobody gives a shit. We're the only city in America that talks like this. Everybody else talks about the movies or TV or sports or stuff. And only us idiots are sitting around going, that treasury bill will never pass. The debt ceiling's too close. Blah, 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 blah. And he's like, we're 22. Why are we talking like this? That's Neither hilarious. of us are working it. Neither of our fathers are senators. Like, we should be talking about how to get laid. What's the matter with us? Do you know, so, it's, it's it, I think there's a lot of stories to be told from it. Maybe that's why there's so much... Maybe it gets so much traction here because there's a lot of like there's nothing to be told in the way of culture in Nebraska. You'll almost never Maybe. watch a program, but there's a fucking yeah. there's a there's a TV show being written every week. Yeah, you know, yeah. in in politics in America in Washington. So you're like, mm. oh yeah, and it just keeps on getting funneled. And you know what I mean? You throw in a CIA fucking lick of paint on it, and you're like, of course. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no Why problem, not? fine. Now I have an interest. Like. I don't know what something popped up. It was a it was a role in government popped up in a TV show. I was about a month ago, and I had to catch myself. I went, and it was like the the chief of staff. 
Yeah. You know, something somebody just went, it's the chief of staff. You know, it was one of these. And I I explained it to myself who the chief of staff at the time of whoa, whoa, whoa. shut up, Tom. You don't even know. <laughs> Stop it. Stop. <laughs> Jeez, you don't know, and you're not supposed to know. The only person that's supposed to know is the staff. Yeah, the chief, they all know who the chief is, and that's it. But what what makes me laugh is like you'll hear, you know, like people bitching about it or whatever, and it's, it's all and like I get questions on the podcast about American politics and stuff, and I'm kind of going, do you think there's one single American gives one fuck about? Yeah, what, about the only what a thing, guy in Tipperary says. The, <laughs> the, also, the only the only thing that I've seen pop up in American news of late is you know that the, the the culling of 200,000 cattle that has been proposed in Ireland, like, which is kind of insane. Like, you know, the, is, it, is, is there a foot and mouth outbreak? Why do they want to no, kill that man? Because they're being told by Europe that, uh, yeah, it will reduce CO2 and the world will be a better place, Jim. I mean, they're not wrong. They are they wrong. They fart a lot. They do. <laughs> but what the, here's a, here's, and this is an argument I actually had with a, I'd be a low level politician close by, and he was kind of going, well, do you know what they, and he was kind of talking on behalf of the farmers. Like, well, don't fucking leave a lot of methane. Us. Has there ever been a test on what, what envelops methane? What, what takes in methane? What's what really strives by um, taking on? He doesn't on... know the answer to that question. And he went, I would, he, and he was looking at me. He's like, "What? I see you're you're talking about this bill has been passed from countries that have huge feedlots. Yes, huge feedlots like France and Spain, yeah. and Germany. Yeah. But what do we have here? Where do we?" Where do our cows mostly eat? Fields. Where? In the countryside. Yeah. Guess what does really well on methane? Grass and trees. Really well. Have you measured how much methane a, a hectare of grass can pull in? First, and he was looking at me like, why would you throw all these algorithms at me? Oh, no. Look, so just guess, saying. Maybe so I guess you, you haven't tried the new Mick plant, huh? I haven't. I, I do. I, I, I haven't. I, I, I will. I will. I'll give it a go. Yeah, I, yeah. I draw a line at the the lab made meat. I'll go. No, I'll just go veggie if if we're okay. Mirage. Yeah, I got no problem with. It. Have I'll you heard? A... Uh, you know what they 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 uh, somebody just made lab made milk. I was <laughs> reading about it. Re I suppose that that's not too far off. The Why like not? meat would meat would be tough to make. Like that'd Why? be there's a lot in I that. I don't care. You see, you see what like I like to eat fish, and then you find out what a fish farm actually looks like, and you're like, oh, I guess I'm not the pickiest eater that I thought I was. <laughs> I uh, sure if you can make it at least even close to what it tastes like, fine. fine. Jim, for anybody wondering, Jim once said to me, um, if like you will never get Jim on a hard line, anything to do with food. Jim once said to me, if I could just get it all done in the morning, Tom, with a pill. If I could eat a 3,000 calorie pill every morning, I would <laughs> yeah, eat a 3,000 Just get it out of the pill. fucking way with a fucking pill, Tom. You, you've I, seen all those, uh, what do they call them, Huel? And uh, there's all kinds of powders that they make or, or liquids that they're, mm. and this, they're looking for people like me. They're trying to be like, if you, if food's not very important to you and you don't <laughs> care and you just want the nutrition and you're sick of the rigmarole, do this. And so I looked at it. I was like, Ooh, maybe, maybe I'm close to my pill dream. And it's not it. What that is, is they give you three liters of sludge ah, and you got to drink the sludge. And I'm like, well, that's worse than that. That's worse than the system I have now, dude. Well, you, just let me eat my sandwiches. That's fine. You get rid so, of, yeah. You don't need teeth. Though. It's the only thing no. you can get on with it. Like, but it's, mm, yeah. I mean, it's I I no, I eat quite a fair bit of fair bit of veggie. We've yeah, been good. yeah, we've been growing. You see that this is the thing is much more interesting when you grow your own couple of little carrots. Oh my and god, and it's and so much better. Oh. It just tastes so much better. Like I was just Lisa and I've been eating the strawberries like mad because we kind of wait for summer. Yeah, for the the Irish summertime strip because you can get strawberries in December, but they're shipped in from South Africa and they're not great. Yeah, but, uh, the strawberries. Yeah, oh, dude, the strawberries, the Wexford or is it Waterford? That's Wexford. Know, one of them. The Wexford. Wexford strawberries in the summertime. It's one of the best goddamn things. And I sound like a lunatic when I talk to people about back home because I'm like, you no no no, you don't understand. Yeah, it tastes like nothing you've ever had. It it, it explodes in your face like a porn film. It's incredible. It's uh, it's just the best, and they just are wonderful. They're wonderful. So yeah, if you're growing your own vegetables, I bet I bet a pepper comes out of your garden tastes so much better than a pepper from somewhere else or a tomato or something. I never even considered about the pepper thing, and they've just come up this year. And you're like, ah, oh, for fuck's sake, what the fuck have I been eating? And yeah. I've been I've been trying to eat, like there's a there's an organic um farm co-op near us, you know, nice. in, a, in a town about ten miles away. So I've been trying to buy from these guys, albeit it's quite expensive. 
But yeah, tried to do them a turn. They're trying to make a few mm. quid and it stuff does taste good. But they had peppers and stuff. And even at that, it was like, ah, oh, yeah. But he would have had them or she would have had them maybe a fucking week. You eat one of those fucking things straight off the fucking vine. Yeah. You eat it like an apple. Yeah. Just, I know. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous. Ridi- mm. Like everything. But I, I, it's funny how far gone people are because I had raw milk for the first time in months. No, sorry. First time in years. years. I don't think like, I've ever had raw milk. It's going to go one of two ways for you, Jim. Either you'll go, no, let's go back to the other. Or what the fuck have I been drinking? What have it's, I been drinking? You bastards have been holding out on me. Uh, it's 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 astronomically good. And it wasn't like I, in my head, I almost turned it to Christopher Robin. I, mean, yeah. I remember my country childhood. No, yeah. it was just Jesus Christ. OK, I'm going to have that in a glass and then I'm going to have it with coffee. I test mm. test everything with coffee. If it can if it can do you right by coffee. I Jesus. drink my coffee black, man. I, I just buy, yeah. I, I do buy nice beans and I have a grinder. That's really the, and you once you have a grinder, you don't even have to buy nice beans. The, no. As long as you're not buying ground coffee. Yeah. That's the only real difference. Well, it's the fresh, it's cheap. It's the freshness of it again, like, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. As soon yeah, as you yeah. grind it up and expose it to oxygen, it's starting to turn on you. So, but, but it's, uh, it, it, it's funny. I was talking with a guy, he's from Croatia. The other day and he comes from a right. great village, great sounding village um, in that what they did was, and they still to this day they're very cooperative. It hasn't been mm. overrun by, you know, capital. Europe capital. It really hasn't. Yeah. You know, which we'll every... get there. Don't you worry about oh, us. We'll get him. We'll get him. We'll get, we'll get him. When he said He's it immediately, I was like, I need to ring somebody about this because <laughs> he was saying like his mother still uh, has bees and harvests honey, and they actually have a collective uh, co-op. This guy goes around one of them. Like, say, there's ten of them. Jim, yeah. you're on the truck this week, so you mm. take your truck, collect everybody's honey. Uh, Tom will do it the following week and we, I collect everybody and they sell it then and jar it up like in a way he was yeah. describing and his upbringing and stuff like that it was, Dude, I bet the lifespan there the average lifespan is like 110 I think I, 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 yeah I guess so like he said himself like he kind of blew up got quite fat when he moved here you know, ah. it's like, yeah, I, I got pretty fucking fat here and he says it's unbelievable how lazy you can get when things are easy I'm like Jesus yeah. don't go to America <laughs> okay, if, you, if you think it's convenient here just ask Christ. Deliveroo about that yeah, like uh, I, uh, I, you there <laughs> couldn't be more restaurants within walking distance of me, and every night it's just delivery drivers up and down. I'm like, where are you guys ordering from? Just yeah. go, it's right there. Like I can, I get it if you're two miles outside of town. Or yeah, something yeah, yeah. And drinking, so you don't want to drive. Fine, fine, fine. But we're around the block, make and I see it, people ordering from the wow some kind of a that's hunt. there, and they're delivering there, and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you feel stupid when a guy in a bicycle pulls up? Is like I brought you your food. Like, oh, uh, yeah, you got to make some sort of hunt out of it. The body needs a hunt. You got to yeah. go. You know what I mean? <laughs> but the guy, the guy, he he tried. I said, I goes, have you, did you have raw milk as a kid? He goes, oh god, yeah. He says, he said, I'll tell you a good one. It's a couple of weeks ago. We were at a, hmm. a market in Limerick. I brought home some for my kids, who are Irish raised. I drank some. I couldn't believe how much I hated it. Cause he's, and I was angry with myself because I wanted that pasteurized feeling mm. of nothingness. He says this was just too much milk, man. <laughs> and it's too kid, much milk. Yeah, we was, dial down the milk. Yeah, Actually, literally. You got any diet milk? <laughs> but this is what he said. He was like, just, it was just, it, it was too much milk, Tom. I'm not kidding. My kids are modern kids. They fucking disgust. It was disgusting, and for me, it was it was ludicrous. And I gave it to Natasha, mm. who would have never had it. And she she did that kind of had it, dude. The suburbs in America, it always blows Lisa away. We go home to visit my parents. You buy a loaf of bread in the supermarket, and you can stick it on your shelf for a month. Ah, stop! It never goes bad because ah. it's just loaded with preservatives because it's it's too much bread in the bread you eat. We got bread that's been stepped on a whole toned bunch down of times. the bread. Yeah. We laughed. It's like a Simpsons, like it's like some yeah. Monty Barnes come out. There's too much bread in this bread. Yep. God damn yep. you! Bread <laughs> now with less bread. Now with fifty percent less bread. I wonder do you, want, do you want bread or you want two percent bread? There's there's like there's an organics crowd over in Dublin eight, I think. You Ooh. should cycle down there someday because I remember yeah. Tommy James, it was a co-op, it was a big setup. It was near uh, yeah, Tommy would be mad about that stuff. And, and I wonder would they have raw milk in there? I'd be just re, a real good test would be you to test. We were, it. Yeah, we were, you know we're what checking I mean? out. Because again, you it know, does... if you've never had it, that sounds to me like something that'll explode your stomach if you've never had it. Like you'll go glug, 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 god damn, that's good. Can I use your bathroom immediately? I wonder. I wonder because 
It, it, no, Natasha wasn't. She didn't say it was strong no. in her stomach at all. The big thing for me is that it smelled of nothing. Nothing. And you think, oh, it will smell of more. No, it smelled of nothing. Like, so what are we smelling in our non-raw milk? Is I don't that know. milk additive? It's like that. It's like you ever hear somebody drive by in a in a fully electric car. And yeah, makes that sound that. Yeah, fuck off with that. They added that sound. Yeah, that's not the that's engine doesn't make Star any Trek. noise. I mean, they know yeah. That, yeah. So um, that I hate that sound. Once I found out that it was added, and then I was like, oh, some nerd was comparing engine spaceship yeah. soundtracks from yeah. some goddamn program. Oh, they had to have a meeting and they got into a really violent argument about it. Like Starfleet. You know, no, Spaceballs. Oh. No. But that's, yeah. And that's that's a thing that on when something is undermined like that. Yeah. It complete, when I, when I, oh. I would have no you problem if had that me. was the sound of an electric motor. I'd be like, that's cool. That's what batteries sound like. Yeah. But now that I know that there's like speakers hidden, that like. <laughs> Why not go all in? I can actually yeah, have to. Make it go. Yeah. Yeah. Make it play music. It just. They should have put like spooky dokies on it. You remember those little clackers you could put on your chopper? Yes. Years ago. <laughs> sure. There you go. I'll hear those coming. <laughs> put it on a fucking hundred grand Tesla. Why not? Yeah. But I, I, I do remember um, a mate of mine given, he'd grown carrots in his allotment and gave it to his friend's daughter who was a young kid who was like hummus and carrots. She just Thomas wanted to keep, she minded her weight or whatever. She wanted to just, yeah. but she just loved gnashing on carrots. And they were always pre washed, pre cut carrots from yep. Tesco, or whatever, in the bag. And he gave her carrots. They chopped up the carrots, gave them a wash, put them in a bowl for her. And she went, Oh, Jesus Christ. And it was basically, Turn down the fucking carrot. Turn this down is, the carrot. There's too much carrot. I need sunglasses. I can't stare at the carrots. Like, <laughs> this is, there's too much going on here. Yeah. So that's that's kind of what made has made vegetables and vegetarianism or whatever. But again, I'm not politically driven. They turn how do they turn eating food political? Like, do you know? Are you, you get, kidding me? I know. They, I know. Bud Light is woke now. They oh, sure for fuck's like that, sake. That's the I mean, most nothing to do with Bud Light a... was piss to start with. Like it was fucking piss. That is the funniest part of it that everybody's arguing over Bud Light. You're I don't like, know. I, I got a theory about beers in that in that regional beers are. Uh, they're perfect for the place that they're designed to be consumed. Yes. So American beers are designed to be consumed while you are sitting in the sun in August at a baseball game. And it's hot. Yes. And you're going to need to drink about 17 of these to keep yourself cool. So they can't be that strong and they got to be light and they got to be cold. So that's why those beers are popular. You don't drink beers are not designed to be consumed outside. No, they're designed to be consumed inside yeah. in a pub while you're hearing about someone you knew who's died. Yeah. That's what a Guinness is perfect for. That's yes. when you want that. So that's how that's my theory of of beer taste. So well, like I, yeah, Bud Light is terrible, Coors Light, all those guys. Of the light garbage beers, Miller Light was always my jam. I just had a you tiny, could do, th the tiniest you, bit of flavor to it. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, that's the only excusable reason to drink it. I won't keep you too long, but I'll drop this bomb on you. Hit me, Budweiser, all those Weisers and all those things being drank completely incorrect, according to an Austrian hunter I met one time on a skiing holiday. Is this is this the crazy foam theory? No, well, I don't know what that is, but his okay. one was like prior to to Budvar, whoever the family were that fucked yeah. off out of Germany or yeah, Austria yeah, yeah. before they went to the States with their recipe. You didn't drink the fucking because I I saw him ordering a bottle of beer, and I remember this guy I'd met him a couple of times, big yeah. hefty guy. He was he was actually a Jägermeister, which is a hunting master. Yeah, he would take wow. people out. Yeah, that's what I... And that's... You're not supposed to drink that stuff with cola. You're supposed to fucking drink that while out in the hunt to give you a little yeah. bit of... Yep. But it's not that strong, so it won't fuck you up. Exactly. But, I, I used to drink it while I was skiing. Just a little nip of it on the chairlift. Yep. Guy had the big curly mustache, the whole lot, and I was drinking whatever beer, local beer it was, and he ordered a Budweiser. And Yuan cracked it open for him, handed it him with a little glass, and went turned around and went and he goes and the pot the pot because he was speaking in English to be polite and I went what fucking pot now are you getting he goes oh but oh yes of course uh, in Schuldigung but fucking Budweiser should not be drank cold that is a tasteless uh, I may as well piss into a bottle and drink that that's what he says what you do so this is the method to it right you don't bang it in the microwave or whatever but you warm water in a pot then you pour your Budweiser into a glass and sit it into that for a minute or okay. two to take it up. I went, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll bite. I'll bite. 
another Budweiser, which I couldn't believe I was fucking ordering. A Budweiser and, and a, a pot, pot of warm water yeah. to put my glass in. And I sat it in. And while it wasn't the, a very good beer, it was about the standard of the kind of beer you'd accept if you got one on holidays for two euro. Do you know what huh. I mean? It was two or three. You're like, oh, I could drink these all day. This is actually a bit of a taste off this. The actual so did, taste. Did heating it up give it more oh, totally. flavor or anything? Totally. Totally. It was fucking like she didn't take she didn't take it from the fridge either. She just took it from the shelf. She just That's took like a the lot. first time somebody showed me how to add water to whiskey. And I was like, why would you water down the whiskey? And it's like, it's not watering down, dude. It's going to open it up. It's going to taste. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Same thing. No, I, what I was talking about with the crazy foam theory is I, I, I went down this rabbit hole of, of watching uh, a guy talk about carbonation in beers. And he's talking yes. about shitty modern lagers, the kind that I drink. And uh, and he was like, there's too much carbonation in it and there's not supposed to be. Like, you know how that that pour that everybody does where it goes to here and then the head is like that. Yes. Like, That's not what you want. You want to dump it in real fast so the head goes like this. And then you wait and then you dump and we make as much head as you possible. Because the more head that you get on it, that's all carbonation that you're not drinking. Yes. And so you want, like when people are like, that's a sloppy pour. No, it isn't. You want the head to explode and then wait until it goes back down and then fill it all the way back up. And then that way, ultimately, you can drink more because you're not as full of gas. Uh -huh. Well, that's when well, you think you're actually probably drinking l less volume because the gas is out of the fucking thing because it's a cheat yeah. to yeah. ram it with gas because you're like, what's all this fluffy stuff? Volume wise, exactly. this fluffy stuff is fucking. I'm here for I'm the beer. I'm not here having a pint at all. It's only like a fucking three quarters. The rest of it is all mm -hmm. fuzz for fuck's sake. Indeed. Christ. Jim. When's the next time you're back up in town, dude? We got to have a beer in I, person. Um, I miss you. I'm not. I only beer, barely saw you. I'm back in that same bar we were in in Wicklow. I think All right. Like next weekend or whatever. Oh, um, nice, nice, nice. That's a good gig. That's fun. But I think I am up earlier in the day to do a very quick photo shoot. So uh, in that yeah. uh, that evening, it's a Friday evening. We cool. grab grab a beer anyway. But I'm going Absolutely, to try. And, man. We need to tie you in with somebody who's coming down, um, and have you on the hill. I would love to come down, man. Things are getting. I would love to come down. Things are getting tasty. I, I've, I've heard heard great things about that joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's one of them ones you go. Uh -huh. This was definitely made yeah. by a comedian. This club was made yes. by a comedian, and they've allowed yes. me to make it, if you know what I mean. And mm -hmm. it's because there's been talk now. Oh, geez, you surely moved to another venue. I'm like, no, this is still. I'm staying with Cool. Cool is the for number one thing. Even if we make a couple of quid, great, but Cool first. Yes, and make so it make way. it a good gig first. Who cares about like? We all uh, know we're not getting rich doing this, dude. No, 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 no. But it's it's a cool thing because it's. Spreading the word of comedy. There's people that have never, ever even thought about it. Like a guy, I've said this before on the podcast, but it was it was something that struck me when before this, this, he mm. actually came to my show in another venue just out, out the road. Like he went before I thought about comedians the same way, I, about as much as I thought about astronauts. Now, he wasn't aligning us, but he was like, yeah. I never like, for Occasionally a... there's a movie about him and maybe I'll yeah. go see it. There yeah. we go. I knew there was a fellow once called Buzz and there was Tommy Tiernan. And uh, that's, 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 that's it. I never considered that you were grew from a thing. Dude, that... you're going to ruin a bunch of kids' lives. A bunch of kids going to grow up in that town thinking they want to become comics. Yeah, good. Good. Good, good. good for them. Fucking good. Let them... I hope they all start open mics in whatever shitty towns they're in. Yeah, and we'll that's go. Thing, dude, and whatever we'll... town you're in, if you're if you're in your if you're in your early twenties and you're listening to this and you let you get into Tom and you like comedy, just start an open mic, dude. Yeah, you can buy one. You can buy one of these and a shitty little PA, two hundred bucks. I'm sure there's a pub with a room they're not using, and just start an open mic. Just start it. I tell you, one of the eye openers for me was Bernard Casey. It yep. was Ber Bernard Casey put him. Uh, he put out his he put out his bat signal that he was only doing rural pubs. We would only contact him for rural pubs. And he was, I think, like he did it, obviously it was a, a good fucking made money, but he he mm. did it from the point of view that rural pubs were suffering and that mm. he wanted to spread the word of stand-up comedy because he could have just yeah. gone and done his own show, but he brought comics with him. Yep. And he did pubs and he just, just send me a picture. If you've got a, a separate room to the bar, send me a picture and we'll hook it up. It's and a he great did. idea. He did it everywhere. He did it. I did a bunch of gigs with him and these people just packed out and they were just like, and they, like, here's the thing, Jim. This? They all remember your name. They yeah. all fucking remember yep. There isn't the, and here was your man that was on with the fucking Noahs. And here was your man that was on with the fucking Eos. Ah, shit, fuck it. The, you know, that's the truth yeah. of it, is that uh, you're you're just another thing to be entertaining. Whereas if you're in these towns, you're the fucking only show. And the only show great, that we talk uh, about for a month. 
It's a great book. You know, the comedian Todd Berry, of course, yeah. he's got a great book that he wrote called Thank You for Coming to Hattiesburg. And he did a tour across America where that was his point. He was like, I'm not playing Philadelphia. Nice. I'm, I'm going to find a town 200, you know, uh, two hours outside of Philadelphia that no one ever goes to. I'm going to go to Hattiesburg. Sure. And, it, you know, he booked it all out. And that's what he did. That was the whole point of it was to go places that people didn't usually go because they got theaters. They got venue spaces. People just don't go there because they can't make as much money. And so there's, you know, a whole couple of high schools worth of kids that got nowhere to go on Saturday night. They'll come see your shit. There you go. And I, this yeah. is this is the thing I've, I've I thought about it before and I've looked into it and it's like, ah, yeah. But, but all of a sudden now a couple of avenues have started opening up and I'm like, nice. Oh, what the fuck? One second here now. And not only that, but you're spreading the word of comedy. People are going, yes, oh, exactly. stand up comedy is a thing. We don't have to. Do you know what I mean? People we go, it's Friday night. What are we going to do? You can go to dinner. You can go to the movies. That's what else is there? What can Nothing. you do? You can't even really go dancing anymore. 20 no. years ago, you'd be like, we'll go to the dance club and we'll go and dance for a little bit. But that's not, yeah. those are all gone. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's, yeah. it's, and even, yeah, it's down. Basically, we've almost no fucking competition now. I mean, yeah. it's kind of, you know, so, <laughs> so as Jim was saying, do open a fucking open mic and we'll get after it. Jim, yeah, this man. has been, uh, somewhat educational I think I learned something I'm not entirely sure what uh, the foam thing anyway I'm there there for that and I left learned how the draft pick works so yeah, yeah, yeah. and about Beavis and Butthead the Beavis and Butthead one that would be actually the, the as we look at each other literally looking like Beavis and fucking Butthead um, <laughs> Jim is my father there we go <laughs> yeah buddy Jim Elliot everywhere on all the usual platforms uh, yeah. I'll stick it a link into show notes down the bottom Brilliant. go follow him He's fucking far smarter than I am. Ah. Ah, thanks a million, Jim. God, I love chatting with Jim. Isn't he smashing? Isn't he a smashing fella? So do follow Jim on all the usual platforms. Jim Elliot. With two T's. Two L's and two T's. For some reason, Irish people keep forgetting that. As they tend to stick an E into my name. I don't know why. But anyway, usual platforms. Find Jim. Have a look in the link in the show notes if you want to follow any of the things I was talking about earlier in the show. Do hit subscribe if you haven't beforehand if whatever platform you're on. Typically most of these seem to be on Spotify so if you are hit the bell as well so you know when a new one pops up. But you get an extra podcast every week if you do become a Patreon for as little as $3 hairs a month. In fact a few people already last week have decided to just buy the year which I think gives you two months or a month off. It's cheaper to do it. Anyway that's what you get you do actually get extra stuff have a look in the link too for all tickets when it comes to uh, later in the year for my new show Thick Enough which is going to be debuting in November but also the Hill Comedy Club there's half the tickets are gone for Emma Dorn on the 29th of July other than that let's just, uh, just you know tis there for you if you want to have a gander there's no shortage to Tom if you do if you haven't seen my full special from 2022 it's also in that link it's called Clathered filmed live in the Roisin Dove had a lot of fun making it there's been a lot of nice people sharing it hey that's the thing even if you don't want to do any of them things give us a screen grab tag the podcast or tag me in it tag Jim in it and let us know where you're listening tells other people about it and you know what if you give the five stars on whatever platform you're on do please as well because that just shows it to more people you know what I mean right going away enjoy the rest of the weekend don't get burnt Good night, Blessed Hanks.